Now, previously, we've looked at some different types of decision-making processes inside of a flowchart. But now we want to take a look at can we nest one decision under another inside of that decision block? And the answer is yes. And what we're going to do is take a look at our previous example where we did this so that we can show how to nest these things. All right, let's take a look at this flowchart. And you can see here I have a if x is greater than y, we print that x is bigger. However, we have to then assume that the no means that y is either bigger or the same. We don't want that. We want it to be able to say, hey, it's y is bigger or x and y are equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of delete a few things down here at the bottom. Because all the top part is going to stay the same. Now I'm going to add one more decision. And it's going to connect to the no. You notice when I just dropped it in, I made it so it highlighted and it connected. This decision is going to be, okay, is y greater than x? And if y is greater than x, then we're going to print that y is bigger. So I come over here to my data IO. We're going to say print y is bigger, and I'm going to connect the true side to print y is bigger. This means that if this is not true, they are equal. So one more data IO. That's going to go underneath the y is greater than x. So I print. They are equal. And I'm going to come down here and join those two. So you can see I have a decision underneath the decision that's still in that conditional block. Now I just need my terminator. I come down here just a little bit. And, and I'm going to go from printing they are equal to end. I have these two blocks. And I have to know, okay, how am I going to put those in? Well, I'm going to connect y is bigger and connect it to my line like you've seen before. Now you may notice that the x is bigger and y is bigger boxes are aligned vertically. So how are we going to do this? Well, we have a couple of options. First is I can come out this side and come down and connect it like this. So that way I have a line that automatically connects into this line. This line is already flowing into that line. Some people prefer to come out and connect it so it lines up, so it's all nice and straight like that. That's one option that you can do. I'm going to do Control-Z, which undoes this. I'm going to move my box just a little bit. And you notice that my Yes line, because it was attached, automatically moved with it. It's one of the nice things about using this type of tool. Now I'm going to come from the bottom and drag a line. And I'm going to connect it to this line right here. So notice that it connects to the line, but it doesn't join up with other lines. So that way, the flow is very smooth into where it goes. It's why I made that line a little bit bigger when I was saying the difference in spacing between their equal versus my end terminator. So there's a couple of different options. They're all essentially equivalent. Doesn't really matter. The idea is we want to visually represent, hey, what's happening here and how can we make this work? So this is a great example of that and it's something that you can use. Now, sometimes a place that you're going to be working or you're going to be going to school with, they'll have a specific way that they want you to use. Use that way. Otherwise, use the way that you find it to be easiest to do. Hopefully you found this example helpful. You liked the video. And why don't you take a look at our next video coming up we're going to look more at getting deeper into these more complex types of decision making.